You've heard of intense pulse light, but a photofacial that helps with dry eye? Yes, actually, yes. <laughs> if you have dry eye, IPL or intense pulse light may be an option for you. Stick around to learn what it is and how it can help your eyes, as well as what to expect when you go for your visit. Welcome to Salisbury Eye Care and Eyewear. I'm Dr. D. My goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Hi, I'm Dr. D. I'm a doctor of optometry with my own private practice. I'm residency trained in ocular disease and I specialize in dry eye. Well, that's appropriate. On this channel, I make educational videos about eye health and vision products. So if you're new here, make sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down in the compliment section so we can chat a little more. <laughs> I do what I want. Today's video is all about my new favorite thing in the world, intense pulse light or IPL. So my pupils, it's time for eye school. Back in 1996, when my old man graduated high school, the FDA cleared their very first XE flash lamp for the use of treatment of vascular lesions. This was the proprietary IPL technology. By 2002, when I had graduated high school, well, the year prior, Rolando Toyos, or Dr. Toyos, who's still a prominent name in dry eye, was credited with using IPL in ocular indications. So he found that when he was performing rosacea treatments with IPL, when the, the light was absorbed by the blood vessels and it generated heat, which caused the secretions of the meibomian glands to be melty and warm. And it opened the meibomian glands and decreased, decreased inflammatory cytokines near the surface of the skin that were contributing to meibomian gland dysfunction. Long story short, he started doing IPL for rosacea. It not only helped the rosacea, but it had positive effects on the meibomian glands as well. And if you've watched my videos before, you know how critical meibomian glands are for dry eye, for ocular lubrication, for keeping the eye moisturized. IPL is also used with acne, and the reason why it's so effective in acne is that it is very good at reducing um, bacterial loads on the skin. Well, that property is also beneficial in dry eye because oftentimes we'll have a biofilm that's formed, an overpopulation of bacteria that causes damage um, and causes kind of a cascade of issues with the meibomian glands leading to dry eye, blepharitis, and all of these problems. So IPL has a couple of properties that really help improve dry eye signs and symptoms. So what is int intense pulse light? Well, it's light with a wide spectrum. The IPL machine is capable of 400 nanometers all the way up to 1200 nanometers, but we can target specific depths by using specific cutoff filters. And I'll show you those cutoff filters and my IPL machine. This intense energy photocoagulates abnormal blood vessels. It's administered in brief pulses that prevent collateral damage to the skin. And when you target chromophores and you destroy those abnormal blood vessels, you remove a major source of inflammation that's leading to these cell changes, tissue changes, and ultimately dry eye. So there's a temporary increase of the temperature at the eyelids, and that results in a liquefaction of the meibum or the actual fluid within the meibomian glands. We also see a reduction of rosacea and a turnover of dead skin cells, which decreases clogging of the glands. We also have eradica eradication of Demodex mites. One of my favorite videos on YouTube is Dr. Laura Perryman's video showing an IPL pulse that kills a Demodex mite. So we know that this treatment can get rid of Demodex infestation on the lids as well. We know it also reduces the bacterial load and having a biofilm existent on these glands is not helpful and can lead to more dry eye symptoms. So IPL also works to reduce that bacterial load. Finally, it increases the expression of anti-inflammatory agents, which is a good thing. We want anti-inflammatory agents helping because dry eye is an inflammatory chronic process. 
and then rejuvenation of the meibomian glands by photomodulation. There is a clear association between eyelid inflammation and skin inflammation around this periorbital lesion. We know that patients with rosacea, skin rosacea, are three to four times more likely to suffer from eyelid inflammation and meibomian gland dysfunction than folks without it. The abnormal blood vessels that are associated with rosacea are secreting pro-inflammatory agents that can trigger blepharitis. And so IPL is truly working to photomodulate, photocoagulate, get rid of these extra blood vessels which are bringing that inflammation to the area. Because the orbital vasculature is so rich, even having rosacea on your cheeks and having those pro-inflammatory things released is gonna make its way to the eyelids. So that's what IPL is and what it does and who it's used for. We're using it for patients with ocular rosacea, but it's also been shown to work um, in heating up the glands and improving dry eye symptoms in patients even without rosacea as well. IPL, in terms of patient selection, is gonna be most suitable for patients with a Fitzpatrick skin for... <laughs> score from one to four. <laughs> score. score from one to four. Score from one to four. <laughs> IPL is going to be most suitable for folks with a skin, Fitzpatrick skin rating type from one to four. And so in other words, it's really not as effective in your darker skin tones. And that's because of that photomodulating effect and the fact that it can actually cause hyper and hypopigmentation issues. And the more pigment you have, the more pronounced that effect can be. So we're really not using it in folks who have just darker skin tones. As a rule of thumb, if you're thinking about having IPL, you've got to have at least five glands per eyelid to have any real good effect from it. If you've already lost all of your glands, if you have total atrophy, there's no gland there for us to rejuvenate and you may not see a positive impact from IPL. Several studies have shown that IPL is effective even for treatment of eyelid inflammation without observable signs of cutaneous rosacea. You do have to be careful administering IPL because administering it without proper eye protection for the patient or yourself can result in adverse events and cause problems. Getting into the science a little bit of the light that's being used, we're using cutoff filter wavelengths because the IPL itself emits a broad spectrum of light. And so I can alter the, um, the actual light absorbed by using a filter. For example, a filter of 560 is gonna block all of the spectrum with wavelengths below 560 nanometers. When we're administering the treatment, the you know sort of treatment that's given is measured in what's called fluence. And fluence is a measure of joules per centimeter squared. Fluence is basically the energy density or how intense the treatment is. The energy density is expressing the total amount of energy that we're delivering with each pulse of the flash lamp per unit area in joules per centimeter squared. So fluence is going to tell you kind of how strong the treatment is. Bumping up the fluence is going to make it more intense and reducing the fluence will make it a less intense treatment. You can also really choose the amount of pulse parameters. So you can deliver the fluence as a single pulse, like all at once, and that's going to be the most intense way, or you can do it as a double pulse or a triple pulse. When you get into a triple pulse, that's a less intense treatment just because that fluence is distributed over three pulses instead of being just over one. We can also determine the pulse duration and the pulse delay, meaning how long is each single pulse lasting and then how long is the delay in between the pulses. So it kind of as a recap with that, increasing the fluence of the treatment is going to make the treatment more aggressive, whereas decreasing it is going to make it less aggressive. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is what you can expect, what IPL is like for dry eyes. We're gonna talk very specific what to expect at your eye care provider's office.
So when IPL is being used in optometry and ophthalmology by your eye care provider, those settings are very specific to this delicate eyelid region. A dermatologist is going to use IPL for a lot of different things. They can get rid of excess blood vessels. They'll even do treatments on the rest of the body, right? But, you know, for optometry and ophthalmology, we're really focusing on this under eye area, what we call tragus to tragus across this, the face right here. So knowing all of that, here's some specifics about dry eye IPL therapy. Your eye doctor is going to recommend a minimum of four treatment sessions spaced about three to four weeks apart. Some patients do just fine with the four sessions, but others need an additional one to two sessions. So all in all, you may look at about four to six sessions of IPL in your initial treatment round. After that, it's recommended, and my experience has been, that keeping up with IPL approximately six, every six to 12 months with one session is gonna help keep your glands in better shape. These maintenance treatments may vary for you. You might have to do them more frequently or less frequently, but keep in mind that you probably will wanna do an IPL maintenance session at least once a year. Before you come in for IPL, there's a few important things to know. It's really important to practice sun care in the days and weeks leading up to your IPL session. We don't wanna perform IPL on really tan skin. So a lot of my patients, I live in the South in the US, and some of my patients get really tan during the summertime. So we'll plan their IPL sessions, delay it a little bit, for the winter months so that their skin is not already tan. If you do IPL on skin that's too tan, you can hyperpigment or hypopigment and cause pigmentary issues, which most people don't really want right here on their face. So that's definitely a consideration and you can get IPL done in the summer. It's just really important that you practice really good skincare, wear a wide brimmed hat, wear um, sunscreen all the time. I really like Elta MD, I'll link that below but practice your sun care. The second is that you have to have a clean face coming in. So just plan on not wearing makeup that day, not wearing skincare that day. Come in very fresh faced and clean, clean face, um, because if you wear makeup, we will have to remove it before we do IPL on you. We have to do some safety eyewear. So um, I personally do IPL on the eyelid itself. I found that by doing IPL in the eyelids, I can get that change in the mybum that I'm looking for and it's more impactful for dry eye. But what you need to know about that is that in order to do IPL on your eyelid, you will have to use ocular shields. Those can be a little intimidating at first. Um, I recommend not Googling that image because it's a little scary but they're typically tolerated really well. I numb the eyes, I put a drop of artificial tears in, and most patients don't even feel them once they're in. Finally, we're gonna put ultrasound gel on your face, and so just expect to feel that kind of cold jelly on your face, which can be a little bit weird. For the few days leading up to your IPL session and the few days after, make sure to avoid any actives in your skincare um, regimen, just avoid your retinols and your salicylic acids, um, as, as other acids and just things. Just... Actives, avoid those. <laughs> <laughs> After the procedure is done, your eye care provider may or may not express your glands. This is up in the air. It sort of depends on the patient and the provider. Not all providers express after IPL and some do. There can be arguments made in both directions and that's just gonna be up to your eye care provider. If you feel very strongly about having your glands expressed because there is some thermal change to the glands and potentially they could get some of that mybum to move out of your mybobian glands, you can certainly talk to your eye care provider about that, and I think most anybody who does IPL would be up for at least discussing it with you. Following your treatment, a range of different sort of skin responses are normal. So many of my patients will have sort of reddened skin, just a little bit red throughout the treatment zone. Um, you may notice that any skin pigmentation, dark spots that you have, age spots that you have, they could even look darker for a couple days before fading down. Um, I personally have had it done and I had some blood vessels that almost looked more prominent after the procedure and then went away within a couple of days. 
Again, there's a range of normal responses, but if you tend to be very, very sensitive to treatments like this, ask your eye care provider to do a test spot for you on the side and you'll get a sense of how your skin responds to IPL. It is possible to have a delayed reaction to IPL. And so again, if you feel like your, your skin doesn't do well with treatments like this and you're a little worried, it is totally fine to ask your eye care provider to do a test spot for you. So now that we've gone over all the technical specifications of IPL, talked a little bit about, about what to expect at your visit, I'm going to take you into my dry eye treatment room and we'll go over the IPL and its parts and pieces together so you can kind of get up close and personal with the machine and just learn a little bit more about what it entails. All right, so here we are. This is the Luminous machine. I do have it on for you, so it's a little bit loud. Um, these are, this is how I do the treatment. So this is the treatment head right here. And this right here is kind of the block of where the treatment happens. So this is a rectangular block, of course. This is gonna cover sort of a larger treatment area. This is on standby, so I can kind of show you on my face you know, we're going across this area right here, directly across the cheeks. So when I treat the actual eyelids, like Brad. <laughs> that's obviously not me doing the treatment because that would be highly unsafe. <laughs> All right, so you've seen this treatment head, but this can actually be changed out. When I'm treating the eyelids, I use this one right here because of its smaller size and ability to treat the lid itself. What is that? It's a smaller treatment head, so I can treat the eyelid itself and get in closer to the meibomian glands. Here's another example of a treatment head. We didn't talk about this in the video, but this would be used for treating a sty or chalazian. So if you have had a lot of chalazians and um, you have a bump on your eyelid, we can direct that energy a little more precisely and actually treat the chalazian, getting rid of that. I mentioned the eye shields that I use being a little intimidating, but here they are. These are the shields that we're using to protect your eyes. Again, if I am treating your eyelids, it is absolutely necessary to use these shields. These are inserted into the eye and despite their appearance, I promise you, they don't hurt. They look a lot scarier than they are. We talked in the video about selectively um, filtering out the light. And so my machine has multiple options for limiting those wavelengths. The wavelength filter is inserted right here in the head. And that's how we adjust the light that we use. When we're doing IPL, you can see that I've done over almost 3000 pulses of IPL thus far. Right here is my fluence meter. So let's say we're treating and the fluence is too high. I can adjust it up or even down. I typically Per your Fitzpatrick skin type, I have my eye settings already loaded in. And if you're a skin type two, I can simply choose this and we already have our fluence figured out. The filter is here for me and the light guide to use. Your doctor will wear glasses much like these right here. These are IPL glasses to protect your doctor as he or she does the treatment. And finally, we just use like a standard hypoallergenic IPL coupling gel. This is just really ultrasound gel. I hope you enjoyed this video, learning a lot about IPL Intense Pulse Light and its indications for dry eye. If you've had Intense Pulse Light, make sure to leave me a comment down in the compliment section. Yes, that's what I'm calling it now. Positive vibes only. <laughs>
<laughs> you attract what you put out. Yeah, but send me all of your stories about IPL down in the comment section. I um, love to hear how it's working for you guys. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss a video. We're here every week and I will see you next time.